Hello guys and welcome back here. It's it's Friday. You know, today, if today was like two months ago, we'd be like, oh, it's such a slow Friday. But since it's April and it's basically the month of the snooze fest and the small cap markets, it's an exciting Friday. I mean, we have a gapper over 40%. <laughs> and uh, it's been quite fun to trade, although it's dried up quite significantly. I'm talking about MOTS. I actually just tried to go for a breakout trade here. Um, did very small position size. You can see some of my other sizes here, 12,000, uh, here's 8,000, here's 10,000. I did a small 2,000 trade with the anticipation of buying more on the breakout. Didn't really get that, so I closed it out. I thought you know, we were seeing some good volume, but the, um, the fall through, the momentum slowed down drastically, so I closed it. Um, I'm actually up right now, 477. I was up around $700, um, and then I gave back some. So right now I'm up 477. You know, it's been so long that I'm even up over 100, 200 bucks pre-market. In the beginning of April, the first week, I had a few times, but I think ever since then, you know, it's it's been so slow pre-market that we just don't see this. Anyway, MOTS is making a perfect first leg and now having a great, great, I mean, just phenomenal consolidation here, holding its highs phenomenally. And then in the market open, we're gonna, we're gonna look for maybe a second leg to the upside. It might be a little bit shaky. Maybe the leg to the upside is gonna happen now. It's hard to say, but um, right now, nice first leg, potential second leg coming up. Fairly new ticker with uh, some spikes here. I think it was 2018. Uh, IPO at some time over here, beginning of April, uh, February, mid-February um, 2018. So the mid of the month. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, right now, yesterday was a very slow day, but we've been getting some momentum back to the upside and right now we're breaking higher. Um, we're kind of stuck in this kind of 175, 15 zone. So right around here. Um, and we're, you know, having the potential to maybe reach $2. So a lot of volume. Good volatility, fast rate of change. I mean, this ticker is usually everything that we're typically looking for. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it myself. Let me go here to posts. Pixie had a great mid to late day run. I don't know if you guys were trading Pixie yesterday. I was not, but I was looking at it this morning. Um, you know, lately we've been getting some really good movers kind of mid to late day. <clears throat> MOTS right here, USA Diagnostics uh, company, 37 million float, 44 million market cap, um, received FDA clearance to market the PureView systems for upper GI uh, endoscopy. Um, that's pretty good. Clearance to market, uh, that's, that's always a good uh, catalyst. Now let's go, yeah, let me actually pull up here, tradejournal.co forward slash connect. Let me pull up my slides and checklist, um, especially for anyone that's new here. Um, and if you guys want access to this uh, PDF or Discord or anything that we talk about pretty much in here, um, here's the link. Um, yeah, so float, let's go through the checklist here. Float below 50 million, yes, it's 37 million, that's really good. Has a news catalyst, strong spike history, not really. It's not the craziest runner, um, fairly new ticker, so it's, it's gonna be interesting. Good daily room to run, definitely. We have that room to um, two, and then after two, let's see if we can break above that and maybe hit 2.5. Um, after that, you know, we, we you know good chance of seeing three, and then really kind of a lot of upside from there. So big resistance zones, but I think it does have pretty good room to run. Fast rate of change for sure. I mean, this ticker was flying earlier today. Uh, and some of these candles right away, it had, you know, this was a 40% candle. Obviously, that's the first one with very little volume, so we can't really count that. But um, here on this pullback, you know, for example, this was a 6% move. Um, so that's really, really nice on that candle. So, um, you know, decent, not like insane, but pretty good. For me, you know, I like stocks between two and seven dollars. This is definitely on the low, low end, um, below two dollars, but you know, it's still okay. It is holding highs. It's not trending exactly above VWAP, but you know, it's trending above big time uh, support, so that's also really good. Max pullback, twenty-five percent from pre-market highs. It, it's holding this very well. It's only pulled back around seventeen percent. Ideally, up forty percent. It's up forty-five percent, so it's there and not overtraded pre-market. 
Um, it's definitely been traded heavily pre-market. I mean, wh what can you say? Um, that's that's definitely the case. Uh, it was really the only lead gapper here worth probably paying attention to in terms of trading. Um, but, you know, that's fine. I think, you know, there could be a shaky open. Maybe we're going to see a little bit of a runner um, into before the open. I don't know. I'll keep a close eye on it. It's on my second screen and uh, we'll go from there. I know ISNS is kind of the second lead gapper here. Uh, worth noting, they also had a really good after hours run. Um, pulled back a little bit more and not nearly as uh, thickly traded, although the price is you know, much higher, so probably very similar. ISNS, 3 million flow, 25 million market cap, pretty nice. USA Scientific Technical Instruments Company, well, let's go back actually here. Get my slippers on, let me take them off quickly. Here we go. Catalyst coming out yesterday morning. Should shareholders reconsider image sensing systems? Uh, CEO comp uh, compensation package uh, where they were reviewing that. And then this, uh, what was it? Yesterday, actually, so that was two days ago. Then yesterday afternoon, 4.05, and that's why we had that big run right um, after the markets closed. Image systems uh, announces strategic changes. So let's actually dive into this a little bit. Dedicated to helping improve safety and efficiency for cities and highways tonight, today announced its board of directors have approved the following actions. So there's dividend, stock buyback program. Reorganization holding company. A lot of reorganization, a lot of kind of administrative stuff here. Stock buyback programs do typically uh, increase the share price of a, of a stock. So you can see here, this one's also been on a little bit of an uptrend in terms of higher lows. The problem is there's been huge resistance on this ticker and it seems like every time it gets to around five and six dollars, it starts seeing a lot of rejection. Here again, it broke five went up to sixes and then weren't was not able to hold six six so we've seen this ticker in these areas before but not really able to hold very long so i think six six is definitely a point where we're going to want to uh, keep an eye on this ticker but if we can break six six and run into the sevens i mean that could be a really good uh, starting point for this ticker so these are definitely the two to be watching On about 17%, not really too bad. Check out the four hour chart. We got the nine EMA coming in as big support here, right around 5.5. Five. This could be a really nice open on ISNS. It could even be a nicer open than um, MOTS. Kevin from Florida, there we go. Let's pull up quick Pixie quickly. I know it's being talked about right now, but also yesterday it was just a really smooth runner. We actually got to go here to the four hour to look at this a little bit better. Um, we've definitely traded Pixie several times in the past. Big support here around three five. And four dollars is really the place to break here. Twelve percent move though. Today I was, I started standing earlier on my standing desk, not on my my standing desk, but you know, next to it, I guess you can say. I raised it earlier and then like two hours into it, I was like, ooh, kind of regret that. I mean, I've, I've used the standing desk to where I stood the whole entire day, but I think it's just because I came from this really long two month trip. Well, I'm not used to standing desks anymore. And I like, my body's got to adjust again. Mm. 
All right, while the market's slow, let's quickly go through some uh, news here. <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you guys have already heard about the Israel uh, stampede yesterday that happened at a religious festival, um, killing 44 people. Uh, according to NPR and many other news sites, and like over a hundred have been uh, injured in critical condition. That's insane. Uh, stampedes are actually really, really dangerous. When too many people are in one closed area, and then there's panic outbreaks. Um, I, w I was I read a few articles, and I have yet to, to really figure out where the pan uh, panic started uh, from. And it seems like there's a lot of confusion over the situation, but um, kind of crazy. Here it again, making headlines. The Giuliani investigation is going to be a good one to keep up to date with. A lot of news lately has been circulating around the 100 days of Biden, Biden's presidency. Yep. Just seeing if I'm seeing anything new or worth mentioning here. Well, eyes are pretty tied to the markets. I think we might see some sort of pre-market rally. Right now, MOTS is actually pushing again. So let's definitely keep an eye on that one. Endeavor, if you guys, I'm sure no IPO'd yesterday. I have it on my IPO list, EDR. Um, the owner of sports and entertainment assets, including the UFC, gained 5% in its trading debut. Obviously, that you know, it's always a volatile um, open. Elon Musk is on board with the IPO, so definitely worth checking out if you guys are, you know, any sort of UFC fan, even. I know I sure am. Twitter shares fall as much as 10% after missing user targets and offering lower guidance. Lower guidance always hurts a stock quite a bit. Amazon posts bigger profits. I was actually looking to buy some Twitter uh, at one point, but uh, and maybe it's a good time. But lowering guidance is usually not something that you know warrants optimism. Nice little move here on MOTS. Watching this one, 2,000 shares ready to go. <clears throat> the pullback, the last pullback was kind of kind of strong. Pinot open, let me quickly add that. Nice move there on MOTS. One sixty three and one sixty four were the really tough spots to be able to break out of. Now a lot kind of a decent amount of sellers popping up here. If we can chip away one sixty three, it might be worth to jump on. Uh, sellers still pushing down though.
162 jumping on it. Buyers coming in here a little bit. I'm gonna go small size, very small size. Look for another break here. I'm looking for that break over 164. One sixty three getting chipped away a little bit. You know, I'm waiting for a second leg on this ticker. I'm going to close it out. Would have wanted some quicker resolution there. MOTS. You know, 37 million float, only a 44 million market cap. This ticker should be pretty quick. Like I wouldn't wait around too long. Um, it's not, you know, lately in April, we've been seeing those, you know, 1 billion, 2 billion market cap tickers that, you know, I'm not a big fan of trading. And uh, they oftentimes take, you know, four, five, six plus attempts to break out. Small caps, you know, one, two attempts, and uh, there's something wrong. So let's see, pull back a little bit, now back to 161. Maybe it's gonna go for a second attempt here. 9.15 a.m. Another 15 minutes before the market opens, plenty of time. I'm also not crazy about trading at this time of day usually, but. Yeah, tried here for several breakouts. Um, I was, you know, I was on kind of on board for the last two, but it didn't really amount to too much. I got my hotkeys, Alt A, Buy Ask, Alt S, Sell, um, Sell the Ask. Basically, these buttons. Uh, I actually meant to say Alt A, um, Buy the Bid. Sorry about that. If I want to slap the ask, I got to do it manually, unfortunately. Alt D is cancel all. MOTS trying again. I know MVIS is being called out. That's been a hot one these last few days. It's, you know, it's got a lot to work back up on though. It's pretty much been a, you know, sell off ever since we had this action here. Huge, huge sell off. Bit of a meme stock as well. I had some alerts on this one. See if we get closer to 10, maybe even break 10. I'm not really sure if that's going to happen. This last sell off has been quite strong. We had a 40% dip, and then we had a almost a 40% dead cat bounce. And now we're kind of in the middle of a 40 plus 50 percent dip so maybe there's going to be some support coming in soon could be a good kind of dip trade uh swing trade kind of opportunity but i don't know I feel like it's really quiet outside. I don't hear anything. The weather is so cold here still. Right now it's uh, 11 or 10 actually, and then four at, at night. 
<laughs> this is this is classic Berlin. If you ever want to know the weather during like winter and you know beginning spring, this is it. I mean, this is why a lot of people leave uh, Berlin in the uh, in the cold times in the cold seasons because it is just gloomy, gray, depressing. And now the fact that there's lockdown, I mean, there's there's almost no advantage a at all. Um, okay, while we watch MOTS, let's quickly go through the rest of this. Um, there's the Endeavor uh, IPO. I was just doing some reading on it. Um, COVID cases going down, but uh, you know these vaccines are slowing down a little bit too, which I'm not really the biggest fan of. It would be nice to see a little bit more um, consistency there. Oops. Let's see, Germany. Vaccination rates are really picking up in Germany. It was really good to see that. At first it was quite slow, but you know they really picked up the pace. Uh, let's quickly go to India, which is a country that's currently a bit of a crisis mode. It looks like there was a little bit of a, a dip there, but uh, numbers are still flying quite, quite high. Boy, yo, 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 yo. Heavy stuff. Ten percent of the population is vaccinated already. Go to Brazil, another country that's uh, historically struggling so far with COVID. <clears throat> it's been a lot of sports right now in the uh, trending searches. Let's quickly go to AMZN after their monster quarterly release. So they had a big spike on the quarterly results. What time was that? After hours, makes sense. Or actually, it looks like in the evening here. No, 4.30 p.m. But uh, didn't really hold the gains that well. I mean, this is just such a huge company. Actually don't even remember drawing these lines. Let me go ahead and remove them. The only lines that I pretty much live by are support and resistance, and usually never horizontal, I mean uh, diagonal trends. Probably playing around. 2008.75 seems to be a place worth noting, a bit of a triple bottom there. And then here at 355, I've had a few temps there now. Looks like it's just continuing. Massive, massive company. Oh yeah, Nicholas, man. I, I'm trying to not even look at it, as ridiculous as that is. <laughs> But uh, I've been studying my swing trades a lot lately. I want to be coming out with a little bit more content related to my swing trades, um, but I need a little bit more time to you know prepare something that's kind of worth putting into a video. I don't want to just say you know what I'd say on the live streams. Nine twenty-two here. I feel like we really kind of did our housekeeping very quickly for some reason. So just kind of. Sitting on our hands. I'm gonna fill up my tea, get some hot water in here. I'll be right back. Hopefully MOTS doesn't fly without me the second I leave.
Oi, bit of a sell off there. Three and a half minutes here before market opens. Yeah, Colby, I, I kind of feel the same way. I think it's uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on. I'm obviously, right here, 148, it seems to be the low we've had. So we'll see if that holds. Unfortunately, on the five minute, you can really see how the sell volume is starting to take over a little bit. I'm gonna move this back to daily. I'm gonna go here to day as well, time of force day. Don't forget, guys. Um, I'll go to ISNS on my second screen or my main screen. Uh, obviously, whichever ticker I jump in on, you guys will see it at the time. But I'm watching MOTS on my second screen for now. <laughs> One going all in. Um, yeah, it's looking a little bumpy, but uh, ISNS picking up here. Obviously, ISNS with that 3 million float has the potential to get halted. Without a question, $6 is going to be that big resistance zone. MOTS with that 37 million float, less likely to have halts, but you know, such a cheap ticker. Who knows? <clears throat> Basically going ISNS, which has strategic changes stock buybacks a lot of corporate restructuring to mots which has an fda clearance um, to market one of their drugs so it's a bit of the difference everything else is quite similar besides you know the float or well, isns 10 times less <clears throat> I have a thousand shares ready to go on ISNS MOTS I got 2k shares RCAT might be worth checking out as well I'll put it on the list All right, another 30 seconds here before the market opens. Good luck, everyone. Comment collected. MOTS on the daily just looks really good potential here if it holds. ISNS did not hesitate to reach that critical 5.5 zone. I wasn't going to blindly buy on it, but uh, looks like a lot of people did, so congrats. I mean, you could already take profits there if you're already 3%. That's not bad. Perfect bounce off of that. Five minute chart, MOTS has got really good volume. Same with ISNS.
MOTS held. So far. Very, very long wicks on ISNS. Bit of a doji candle in the last one minute. MOTS just broke to a new low. Coin selling off, possibly breaking 2.9. No trades yet for me. I said that's really holding this area well. MOTS might keep selling off. Wants as any deodorant for MOTS. Ay, ay, ay. And AKD trying a, a big bounce off the lows. Sticker sold off so much. MOTS. I mean, MOTS only a thirty-six million dollar volume. Pretty, pretty low end. There it goes. MOTS making moves higher now for the first time. Nice, back above 57 here momentarily. Let's see if we can hold. Solid red to green move so far. This is definitely the lead gapper that everyone's watching right now, guys. This is the top gapper at the moment with volume. I try here with small size. <clears throat> Looking for that break of 1.6. Right now it's having a healthy pullback. 56 getting potentially chipped here. Let's watch it. New minute starting. Long, small size here at 52, very small size. Average down there. Uh, still shaky, this ticker, still shaky. Don't have a full size yet, but try to cut my um, cut my trade there for a second when I saw some difficulties. Looks like it's still selling off here. Let's see what kind of move we can get back to the upside. It's struggling though at 46. Mm, yeah, still selling off here. Sell momentum a little bit stronger than I anticipated. Five minute chart showing a lot of uh, pressure. Down about four cents a share right now.
gonna probably cut this one. Still struggling here. 146 showing some signs of breaking though. Ah, still selling off. Don't have a full size yet though. I've been using smaller size. Don't really like holding this one as it's just getting chipped. Cut my losses, half of them at 45. I like what I'm seeing on this ticker in terms of potential, but uh, price action right now is scaring me a little bit, so I'm cutting my losses on this one. Maybe we're gonna get another attempt coming up here at one point, but for now, uh, I do want to kind of reduce some of my risk on this. We could see a pop back to the 9E May. It's just hard to say. You can see 145 is definitely gaining some traction right now. It's good to see that. It's good to see that support coming in there. So let's see if we can keep trading it. Let me pull up ISNS on the second screen. I know I was missing this one. I knew I was missing something. Really good action on ISNS. Markets are all slightly red. Looks like they were kind of selling off at the open, but they're kind of recovering a little bit. ISNS is reaching that really, really key $6 zone. This ticker's a little bit wishy-washy. MOTS chipping now at 147. We might have a move higher on this one, but you know that five minute open volume is not very promising. 147 getting chipped away on MOTS. MOTS, I'm watching around 140. I'm not going to buy it yet again. And uh, ISNS could, could be a good pullback entry coming up. Bit of flush there on ISNS. MBIS from yesterday had a great open there. Nice move, guys, to anyone that was nailing this one. We got a little bit of resistance coming in here, but overall, pretty sweet, pretty sweet pullback there. Nice open, good pullback, and then nice little continuation. Congrats to anyone that nailed that. A little nervous here on MOTS with this amount of sell volume at the moment. And 
VIS is actually looking still pretty interesting, but uh, I think it's just the sell momentum on this one, or the the sellers on this one are just so high, making me a little bit cautious wanting to trade it overall. But uh, MOTS is no better off. Wow, what a what a sell off there on ISNS. Three million float. I mean, this is the one that we were talking about pre market that could get halted. Am I being called out? That's struggling though. Man, I was actually, I had a little bit more uh, excitement here with MOTS pre-market. I was like, all right, we're getting some action. <laughs> but, uh, it was very short-lived free market. Clover at the green. Oh yeah, nice, back in the tens. Good 7% move there, almost worth day trading. Yeah, Colby, that's pretty true. Pixie moving back up. Good call out, guys. Pixie with its really, really nice afternoon run yesterday. Good clean, good clean moves. Possible size here on Pixie. MOTS guys found a bottom at one four. It's a temporary bottom. There's a big sell off though. I mean, we're talking like about seven, eight percent off the the open. Yeah, good call on, on VXRT. Not as fast rate of change though. Thing about Pixie is it's in such a tough zone to try to break higher. Same with MOTS, also in a bit of a tough spot. It's got huge resistance there on the 9 EMA. Watching Pixie here, this is a critical um, point for Pixie. I like the potential support here at around 85. And you see a lot of buyers there at 85. Nice, good pullback, breaking higher. Good move there, congrats to anyone that nailed that one. I was just a little bit too conservative. I 
I'm watching uh, MOTS still on my second screen, but not blown away by the action on it anymore. You know, downwards trending ticker, a little bit disappointing. It was all pre-market on that one, I guess. Nice break out there on Pixie. Whoa, instant flush. What was that? Man. Just the market. That is hectic. Seven point six float. Yeah, you can really see my lack of confidence with a lot of these tickers. I mean, I didn't even feel comfortable buying this pullback, which gave you a quick potential, you know, six percent profit. But, you know, unless you sold super fast, you instantly got flushed in. So, this is a tough one. Interesting, James. <laughs> Coffee. Yeah, usually I'll be buying dips, but I'm looking typically for a ticker that's a bit more stable and predictable when I'm dip trading. Which uh, Pixie is definitely uh, not part of at the moment. So unfortunate, you know, we gave back pretty much all our profits on MOTS, you know, we were up Today at the highest point, about $700, um, gave back around $200 before the market opened. And then, you know, MOTS, unfortunately, did not have the continuation we were looking for. And then I gave back pretty much the rest on MOTS on that last trade. Luckily, I didn't even go uh, full size, but it uh, just shows, you know, uh, you know, if, you, if there's a situation that's not as clean, sometimes it's better to go lighter size and... Uh, manage your risk that way because you, if you don't take the opportunity you're going to drive yourself insane you're going to start missing opportunities and that's also no way to be a trader i've learned oh mots having a huge sell-off right now it almost feels like an offering or something at that level watch out with the first big red candle oftentimes it's tempting to want to buy it but there's usually a follow-up if it's not a big red candle sometimes it's at least just a little bit dip I and mean, you could get a gauge for seeing if there's a bit of shift in momentum it's a big sell-off though
the amount of people buying this dip on MOTS is quite impressive, but the uh, sellers are not are relentless. I mean, they're just they're just constantly there. Good first little bounce. <laughs> yeah, Colby, fair enough. Keep us posted on that. On uh on the light speed experience. In the Discord I can go ahead and add it as well. Uh the light speed. I don't think there is a light speed in there. Let's quickly check EDR. Nice little move higher. About well, five percent from the from pre market roughly consolidating now. A lot of IPOs lately have just been getting crushed. Nine fifty two, and we're just not getting really a lot of tradable action, which is kind of depressing. Um, yesterday's open had had more opportunities, but today's pre market had more opportunities. So you really just want to find the opportunities, trade them, and then you know kind of wrap it up. I keep telling myself that over and over again, and. Uh, I don't do it because you just don't know, you know, sometimes if the op if there's an opportunity or not, uh, you know, until hindsight. Um, plus, kind of the added um, effect of you know being alive and you know potentially feeling like I need to be doing something probably doesn't help. ISNS, good move there, back up. <clears throat> Choppy ticker though, Whew. man. When this ticker runs, it runs. But look at the five minute. I mean, that's just the choppiest thing I've seen in a long time. Possible break of six there. Three million float. I mean, this ticker is explosive for sure, to say the least. <laughs> nice sharky. I see that. There's the break. Let's see if we can get a new high there at 6.7. Good momentum still here. I feel like we might see it. Technical ISNS didn't sell off that much. Only about 3%, which really is not that bad. Here's the break, possibly at six seven. Oh, still struggling. New minute coming up here in ten seconds. There it goes six seven. Just touched it. Boom, broke it. Try to jump on there at 89, didn't get my fill. Let's see if we can get a second fill here. Long at 92, 1,000 shares, small size. Half size, actually like 25% of my, my typical size here. Long at 91, possible dip.
still small size on this one. First trade on ISNS. Good catalyst, stock buyback, 3 million flow, 25 million market cap. I mean, this is a quick moving ticker for sure. Kind of looks like MOTS might have put in a little bit of a temporary low. Possible break there at 95, was waiting for the break. Let's see if we can get a break. Having some struggles. Yeah, still struggling here. Long, one more size there. I like the fact that it is kind of holding here, but you do have to be a little bit cautious. Looking for that break over 5.9, and then ideally into the 9.5s and so forth. Buying momentum is definitely here to some extent. Holding. Five minute, definitely nice support on this one. Chipping point nine. Closing out there for that break. I'm not looking to hold past six. That was my goal for a break past six, um, right? I, I, I'm always looking to take uh, a chunk out of the move, right? I'm not trying to sell at the perfect high. So my thought was we might break six. If we go to 610, 620, great, so be it. Uh, but in this market, I, you know, I'm not the one to stick around so long. So I was able to get out nicely at 9.7 roughly. Unfortunately, you know, that was kind of a lot of risk because I could have got out at 9.5 several times. So I'm wondering if it was worth the risk. Um, I don't know. I suppose so. We made back some of our losses on ISNS. Um, but, you know, if we just stopped trading pre-market when we were up 700, you know, it would have been a lot easier with a lot less stress. So, you know. <laughs> Matt says, come on, do it for him. <laughs> Thanks, man. I think ISNS has a really good chance breaking six. I think I think there's a lot going for it. Good support here. Big relative volume today. I mean, definitely there's opportunity here. I mean, last time we were in these levels, we had pretty much zero volume. So we could see it. We could really see it. There might be a shakeout though, and I just didn't want to hold through a shakeout. MOTS is popping back up here. MOTS hit a low of 136, and now it's up at 147. That's about a 7 slash 8% move. So not too bad. Thanks, Matt. It was definitely a little bit sketch for sure.
Here we go, ISNS moving back to six. Volume's a little bit light. I see Ramoli's comment, ISNS would have been good for you, get aggressive. Hopefully that, uh, that was aggressive enough. I would love to trade MOTS again. I just, just don't know how good it is now at the moment. Technically, it made a higher low. It sucks that we got kind of burnt out on this one. Nice, Scott. Yeah, infinity, that's always a stressful position to be in. Oh. <laughs> Funny bone, just got nailed. Woo. MOTS, it's looking like it's gonna try to retest VWAP here. Man, I would love to jump back in on MOTS. I would love, 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 love to do it. The volume's picking up as well. Right now, right now buying into this breakout would be extremely risky. We got on the five minute big nine EMA resistance. We got VWAP ahead. We got 1.5 ahead, psychological zone. Um, 1.5 is also a major multi-month support and resistance zone. So the overhead resistance pressure is, is very high at the moment. Also this ticker, let's see here, how much did it dip from the open? It opened right around here at 151. That's about a 10% sell off. That's not too bad, it could recover from that. It's usually, I feel like once tickers go past like 13, 14%, I've noticed they, they oftentimes don't recover, but it held the 10%. Juan, <laughs> you held it, man. You held it past some heavy stuff. Good for you. ISNS drop being called out. This is what I was so nervous about happening pretty much here. I was I was mad on edge. We got some good uptrending support though. This is a bit of a channel we're in right now on uh, ISNS. I wonder if this is gonna hold. Maybe we're gonna get a move here, but I don't know. I'll put an alert on it. Watching MOTS as well. Great, great move back to the upside. If we could break above VWAP and VWAP becomes support, I think I would start trading it again. Dang, Jonathan, that's one way to wake up and get the heart rolling. Some people do yoga. Some people trade small caps first thing in the morning. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting to watch MOTS. Don't forget to drop a like, guys, if you enjoy the content. And if you're totally new, consider subscribing. We'd all love to see you again. Keep growing the community here. Getting better and better. MOTS has that potential to be a good winner, but look at that big sell spike in the middle of the day, or in the middle of the morning, open, yikes. Let's 
it seems like a, a lot of people kind of came back to really trade this one. Last time we had a huge aggressive sell-off. We had a beautiful recovery, a 13% bounce. How far did we recover here? Yeah, again, just about 13%. Look at that. But then, then we had a really unfortunate uh, sell-off again. And then it pretty much stagnated and went flat. Not saying that's going to happen again, but it's always good to be aware. MV, MVIS, MVIS is at fourteen seventy two for me, James. It's a bit weird. Thanks, JK. DM, MA box. <laughs> JKD. Markets are kind of consolidating here, though. We had a good little bounce, and now they're you know selling off a little bit again. Let's do what markets do. Bitcoin up six percent today. It's it's a lot. Sorry about that, Jan. That one came out against my will. Twenty five is an intricate zone here on this ticker. Uh, Twenty five Whoa, MOTS just broke higher, guys. Nice move as well. Really good move. M MOTS is definitely back on the radar, I think, of a lot of people. That was a phenomenal open that last minute. Volume picked up, yep, one, it picked up quite a bit actually, back above two million shares last minute. This is the critical top here. Again, we're kind of at another critical zone, 158. A lot of people front running this area at 157. MOTS, USA Diagnostic Research Company. I mean, looking pretty promising. 37 million float, 44 million market cap. We had a really strong move here on 15%. FDA clearance, just a market their drug. Let's see, going into the eights. Boom, look at that move right away into the eights and then the nines. Okay, okay. MOTS is definitely back in the game. Good to see that action here. I was almost getting depressed for a little bit. ISNS is also bouncing off uh, the lower um, trend line. About a 3.75% bounce. Clove is spiking Matt said for a second there. White Walker Wallet 1.7. Huge buyers then popped up again on MOTS. ISNS is really holding this area well. It's been a shaky ticker, but it might start, you know, really performing nicely. ISNS back above six here. This is this has been the tough place to break for ISNS. Sharky. Yeah, that's pretty much ISNS in a nutshell.
Yeah, Scott, I'm also a little bit nervous there on IS on the asset six. Right now it's making potentially a lower high. That's that's a bit of a concern. And I know TS looks quite interesting here. It's had a phenomenal run off the lows. I feel like the MOTS setup right now is almost too good to be true. Look at one six just chipping away like a champ. ISN is still consolidating, setting up a potential pullback opportunity. MOTS is really hammering in that breakout there at 1.6, really kind of putting the writing in the wall. ISNS going for that $6 breakout here again. Boom! Oh, I was just about to buy that 9 EMA pullback, but I missed it. I was watching MOTS. I'm a little distracted today between the two tickers. Um, also, ISNS is just such a wiki ticker that buying the breakouts on this one is very, very dangerous. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if MOTS needed a little bit more time to consolidate. I mean, that run-up has been really aggressive now. MOTS seeing a little bit more sell volume coming in. New minute. Possible flag pattern on ISNS. Nice, Scott. Take care, man. Congrats on the green. <laughs> View up. That's one way to put it. ISNS, it's, it's so many attempts now to break six. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, there's 
there's a big seller there for sure. I mean, it's tried this. What was that? Sometime here, mid February, it tried it as well and just totally got den denied. Yeah, Pixie really lost a lot of its momentum. You can see MOTS kind of struggling to go back up, but actually not really struggling. Light on volume, but I not got anything from struggling. It's actually holding this area phenomenally, much more aggressively than I would have expected. Yeah, Aaron, for sure, for sure. But there's no need to push it in this market, you know, we're currently in. Or else you might traumatize yourself before it gets good. So, so, so. MOTS trying to break out again here at 1.6. Kind of looks like it might be forming a bit more of an ABC or a little bit of a longer flag pattern or something like that. I'm not sure if I would be trading. Oh, well, here it goes. Yeah, I'm a little too conservative on this one. Phenomenal pullbacks. <laughs> ISNS just never wants to stop flushing every time it reaches a new level. My God. <laughs> One of the 420 yesterday. Dang, man. We've both been taking some hits this month. ISNS, honestly, if you just buy any sort of big whip and just sell on the first pop, you could be scalping the heck out of that ticker. Fortunately, by the time you realize that, you know, it's oftentimes too late and then, you know, the big crash happens or something like that. But th those dips, man. So thinking what you know what's the potential we can squeeze out another trade here <sighs> i really liked mots i kind of wish i got a bit more aggressive on it to be honest that kind of recovery i wasn't ready for so i did not jump on it i could have should have would have though I'm trying to wonder if this is going to be a ticker that's going to keep giving us pretty decent moves for the uh, you know next one hour or so could be we're getting getting some uh, more unorthodox trading times lately. One five five. Ooh, getting shipped very quick there on NOTS. New low on MOTS in terms of its little uptrend here. I think the last time we didn't break 154, hit 153, and then we just did 
No, I think 154, yeah. Five minute really aggressive flag pattern on MOTS. Possible small size here at 52. Just going to watch it. Oops. Long at 13. That was a big flush for sure. Take a I took a loss there on that one. To be honest, that flush I was not ready for. That was next level. I was up 77 bucks on MOTS, uh, gave back a little bit. I'm actually still up on MOTS. I've been giving back profits all day on MOTS. Unbelievable. That was actually a really nice pullback at first, but the uh, the extended flush was a little bit too, too much for me. And then I actually ended up buying on accident at... Um, Another 2,000 shares on accident. I only wanted an 8K position size, and that I think that kind of messed with my psyche, psyche a little bit. Nice, nice back at 152. I was really thinking, usually when I see a big red candle, you see a second at least follow-up red, and then it, you know, it'll teeter. Either it's going to flush again or support starts coming in. That's actually where I like to be buying. So let's actually watch this one. So yeah, 149. So that was a little bit of a dead cat bounce, but you know, it could be holding here. Nice. Holding a little bit. That was a big move. Let's see here, new minute, new five minute candles are gonna start in 20 seconds. I think that's gonna be a good one to watch. One forty five is big, big time support. I'm not sure if we're gonna get another move down there, but that could happen. I think it's it's interesting enough to watch for sure. So I was starting to go long at 152, and then I bought more at 151. And then I bought a little bit more at 1505. And then I just basically dumped all my shares at 151 and 1505. Fifteen K size. Small tiny loss percentage wise. Who would have thought the super sketchy ticker today was the, the reason I'm actually slightly in the green today? Hmm. Could see another dip here. MVI is being called out. Great move there on MVIS. This would have been good to keep an eye on, but uh, I think I already had enough tickers I was split across. This is such a big resistance zone for MVIS, so seeing it crawl above it is, is quite a good sign. Nice, Ramoli. I hope I hope it works for you, man. 
I definitely uh, sold that one a day too early. MOTS back at 53. If we sold at 53, we actually would have walked away with a pretty decent profit. I think those kind of dumps are a bit inevitable once a ticker is uh, had such a strong run up. So it's not that I wasn't anticipating it, right? I actually was, I was already low balling that this would not hold here and thinking, okay, we might hit 52 and then maybe we're gonna go into the 51s. Um, but somehow I was still shocked about how it, how it went about it. And I think that put me on a little bit of edge there, which is a bit unfortunate. Matt, I like the, I like the hustle there. <laughs> it's a serious battle cry. MOTS dipping again. We have Mara up here on our list. That is not something you see all the time. MOTS dipping. MOTS seeing some pretty decent support at 146. Might crack though. Take care, Matt. Good little bounce on MLTS. Kind of felt a little premature in my eyes. Yeah, it's hard to say what's gonna happen. I mean, it's it's not the typical ticker that at this point, you know, I wanna be looking at, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's 1031 here. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping we'd be able to squeeze something out of this one. Well, on a whole day of trading MOTS, um, you know, I, I went up and I went back down and pretty much gave back all my profits. 
Luckily, I you know made some profits on ISNS, which is nice. Um, that was a, a shaky one. So yeah, day trading recap wise, you know, very, very small profit day here, better than a red day, pretty much a scratch of a day is what I refer to um, this as, I mean, you know, up or down a hundred bucks, it's uh, with my position size, it's it's pretty much a, a neutral. Um, yeah, MOTS was looking really good. I mean, what I was, what you know, we had a great front side move. I traded the front side. This is where I made pretty much all of my money. The consolidation, I gave back some profits, but only about 200 bucks out of my 700. And then, you know, the backside, you know, really, really burnt me a little bit harder than it should have. So that was probably a little bit frustrating. With ISNS, I think we had some really good moves with ISNS in terms of, you know, buying quick moves. And it was a fun one to trade. I had a good time trading it, 3 million floats. So, I mean, heck. It's actually holding really, really well. And it looks like it wants to break six so bad, but there there seems to be some hidden sellers there. Because every time we go into sixes, we get, you know, knocked right back down. But, you know, there's still a solid uptrend here. Um, so who knows? To me, it's a little bit too sketchy to be trading. So I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna be done here. This is the last trading day of the month. So guys, I will see you in March. I, I mean, May, I'll see you in May, not March. I am so stoked for May. I'm just stoked for some new action here. It's been it's been a, a little bit of a drain of energy trading April. Um, yeah, I mean, here you see it. It's just like all over the place. If you go to something like Jan or Feb, I mean, it's it's way more consistent and to the upside while, you know, you know, April is just like constantly below. Um, I think I'm ending this month green but i really think it's by like a few hairs um so yeah um don't forget guys put in your calendars uh what day is it tuesday april so that's going to be right here that is can you guys even see this yes you can so next month is may why do i keep saying the wrong month Next month, May 4th, it's a Tuesday. I'm gonna be doing the um, the monthly recap for April after the stream at 12. And uh, it's going to be hopefully pretty straightforward. We'll have definitely a Q&A session. And um, I wanna be talking about the running P&L because I was studying my running P&L for all of 2020 so far and i kind of found some interesting metrics that i want to share with you guys so that's definitely going to be the topic and uh we'll have you know we'll divide it on that topic and the overall q a and uh yeah what we want to you know plan and see and how we're going to prep for uh for may so that's you know all the topics that we're going to be covering a little bit of you know reflection forecasting and then faq so i'll see you guys there for that um may 4th yes that's it that is it Tuesday, May 4th, after the stream. All right, guys, I'll see you then. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Yeah, we will, life. We will. <laughs> Peace out, everyone. Look at this. ISNS is trying to break out again. And uh, MOTS, who knows? Who knows? Hey, good luck trading, guys, if you keep on trading. And uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Ciao, ciao.